As of the latest Game of Thrones book, a young man named Young Griff is invading the Stormlands with a sellsword army, claiming to be the son of Rhaegar Targaryen. But who is he truly? Who are his allies? And what does any of this have to do with an extinct rebellious house? In my last video, we explored the Blackfire Rebellions. From Daemon I to Maylees the Monstrous, the last of the male line, allegedly. You see, there are theories abound that this ongoing Targaryen restoration is secretly the sixth Blackfire Rebellion. Feel free to like and subscribe to support Fantasy Haven, and if you're interested, we have a Patreon with all sorts of exclusive content and fun rewards. And let me know in the comments if you think Young Griff is a Targaryen or a Blackfire. To fully understand this conflict, we must first explore an unlikely friendship. One between a handsome young sellsword and a eunuch thief. In the free city of Lys, an orphan slave named Varys was apprenticed to a troop of travelling mummers. While travelling through Myr, the boy was bought by a mysterious sorcerer and castrated as part of a blood ritual. He was left for dead, but the flame inside him was kept alive by hatred and spite. At first, Varys earned his coin by begging and selling his body, until he learned to steal his coin. But you cannot become a master thief without making some enemies, and Varys was forced to flee to Pentos, where he met Illyrio Mopatis. Illyrio was a bravo, which is to say, a swaggering, colourful young swordsman. Together, the eunuch and the sellsword grew rich from thievery and spying. Varys would train his network of orphan boys and girls he called mice to steal letters, ledgers and charts. The bravo became a wealthy cheesemonger and magister, married to the daughter of the cousin of the Prince of Pentos. When she died, he married a woman from a Lycene pillow house, and the enraged Prince of Pentos barred Illyrio from the palace forever. At some point, the Grey Plague spread throughout Pentos, and Sarah died. Illyrio kept her petrified hands as a token of her memory. Meanwhile, the eunuch spymaster was hired by King Ares II to serve the Iron Throne. He was named Lord Varys, the Master of Whisperers, and so he whispered in the Mad King's ear, turning him against his son and heir, Rhaegar. The spider cemented his own spy network in the Red Keep, uncovering secret tunnels and hiring children he called Little Birds. When Robert's Rebellion broke out, Varys remained loyal to the Targaryens, and when Tywin Lannister sacked King's Landing, he allegedly swapped Rhaegar's son, Prince Aegon Targaryen, with a peasant boy he'd purchased with a flagon of Arbor Gold. The fake prince was slaughtered by the mountain, while the real Aegon was safely smuggled to Essos. His usefulness secured him his life and position during the reign of King Robert Baratheon. Aegon Targaryen has been raised by a troop of exiled misfits. He hides his true identity by dyeing his hair blue and claiming to be young Griff, the son of Griff, who is actually John Connington in disguise. Lord John was a Targaryen loyalist exiled by the Mad King for his failure, who was deeply in love with Prince Rhaegar. Now he wishes to honour Rhaegar's memory by restoring the Targaryen dynasty to power. Young Griff is protected and trained in arms by Sir Rowley Duckfield, the son of a blacksmith who broke the arms of Laurent Caswell and subsequently joined the Golden Company in exile. In matters of history and politics, he is taught by the chainless Halden Halfmaester, while in the Mysteries of the Faith, he is instructed by the soiled Scepter Lamour. Young Griff has supposedly been raised to be the perfect king. He's been trained in arms, history, law, poetry, mysteries of the faith. He's lived with fisher folk and learned how to look after himself. He has been raised to believe that kingship is his duty, not his right. Illyrio and Varys have the support of the Golden Company. They plotted with its leader, Sir Miles Toyne, before he passed away and was replaced by the paymaster, Sir Harry Strickland. Initially, Illyrio plans for Aegon to marry his aunt, Daenerys Targaryen, granting access to her army and her three dragons. Together, they would be unstoppable, and their marriage would prevent any dynastic disputes. However, Aegon convinces John Connington and the Golden Company to ignore Daenerys and strike at weakened Westeros, and they launch an invasion of the Stormlands. John Connington reclaims his seat at Griffin's Roost, Sir Tristan Rivers takes Crow's Nest, Sir Laswell Peak seizes the Rain House, Mark Mandrake takes the island of Estamont, and Goris Edorian encamps with King Aegon to await stragglers. Aegon and the Golden Company are currently advancing on Storm's End, which is held by the Stannis loyalist Sir Gilbert Farring. The Golden Company claim to have friends in the Reach to aid them, perhaps the powerful Lord Mathis Rowan, or maybe even Lord Randall Tarly, who may wish to snatch Brightwater Keep from Garland Tyrell on behalf of his Florent wife. Duran Martell will also likely join the fray, and some speculate Aegon will marry his daughter, Ariane Martell, to secure the Dornish alliance. Illyrio may even have some hidden cards up his sleeve, such as the young Baratheon bastard Edric Storm, who could be placed as the puppet lord of Storm's End, or perhaps even the missing Tyrek Lannister, who likewise could be the puppet lord of Casterly Rock. 
Meanwhile, Varys has been working his magic in King's Landing, stirring up tensions between the Lannisters and the Tyrells, and assassinating figures of stability, Pycelle and Kevin Lannister. He ensures that their deaths look like Tyrion's handiwork, for Cersei's sake. The death of Kevin leaves the Regency open for either Mace Tyrell or Cersei herself, which will inflame tensions further. To make matters worse, the Grand Maester role will likely be filled by Gorman Tyrell, Lord Mace's uncle, which will further push Cersei into paranoid madness. The more chaotic and weak the crown acts, the easier it will be for young Griff to take the throne as King Aegon VI Targaryen. But things are rarely so simple. The plans of Varys and Illyrio are complex and often contradictory. If Varys was a Targaryen loyalist, why would he turn the Mad King against Rhaegar, a respected figure of stability? Did he really swap out Aegon with a peasant boy? And if that were true, why would he and Illyrio plot a Dothraki invasion of Westeros to install Viserys Targaryen as king? Perhaps the Magister and the Eunuch are only loyal to themselves. Disinheriting Rhaegar would have made young Viserys the heir, until the birth of young Aegon. Perhaps Varys and Illyrio wished to rule the realm through a malleable child king. Perhaps Varys lied about saving baby Aegon, and young Griff is little more than a pisswater prince, a pretender brainwashed into thinking he's the son of Rhaegar. His tutor, Septa Lamor, has stretch marks. Maybe he's her son. It's possible that the unstable Viserys invading Westeros with a savage army was designed as a false flag attack, creating the conditions for an alleged Aegon Targaryen to traverse the Narrow Sea, defeat the evil king and his horde, and seat himself upon the Iron Throne. No one but the Magister and the Eunuch would know the truth. There is a third option. That young Griff is not a Targaryen, but nor is he a random peasant pretender. Instead, the Red Dragon may be Black, King Aegon Blackfire descended from the female line, perhaps even from the line of Bittersteel and Canna Blackfire, which we know nothing about. After all, young Griff has the backing of the Golden Company, swords descended from Blackfire rebels, founded by Bittersteel himself. Just as the Blackfire rebellions were not purely motivated by politics, there must be matters of the heart driving Illyrio and Varys. They clearly desire power. After all, Illyrio is scorned in Pentos due to his marriage to Sarah, and wants his own castle in Westeros and a place on the small council. But he also has debts of affection to repay. He grieves for his wife Sarah, and some suspect she may be Sarah Blackfire, and that they are the true parents of Aegon. Sarah sounds similar to Valyrian names, and she is described as having golden hair streaked with silver. Perhaps Illyrio wishes to see his son on the Iron Throne, to fulfil the dreams of his Blackfire wife. Varys may just be a close friend helping him along, or he may be a Blackfire himself, potentially even Sarah's brother. Like her, he is a former Lysene slave, and his shaved head could be an attempt to disguise his identity. His king's blood would also explain the castration ritual when he was a child. Ultimately, we don't yet know the truth. Aegon could truly be a Targaryen, or just a peasant boy. Even if he is a Blackfire, his identity may remain secret. Or perhaps we can expect a sixth Blackfire rebellion, and a black dragon seated on the Iron Throne, beneath the golden skull of Bittersteel. You can watch the entire history of the Blackfire Rebellions in this video. Special thanks to my patrons, Andre, Boombler, Lala Loopsy, Lord Devon Cole, Coleshot, and Lauren. If you want more content like this, like and subscribe, and be sure to check out the Patreon. And let me know in the comments, is Young Griffith Targaryen a pretender or a Blackfire?